all right so a very good evening to everyone so i welcome you all to this particular session on the discussion of questions related to hematology so in this entire month like we have discussed many topics related to hematology so i had discussed almost like uh, 20 hours of hematology on an academy platform so all those particular sessions are available to you in a recorded format they are available for you for free you can watch all those 20 hours of sessions on hematology for completely free and that will be available for you in a recorded format so how can you watch those videos so you have to download the unacademy learning app in which you have to select the category need pg category so after selecting the need pg category you just go to my profile that is g rajesh so under my profile you will be having the recorded videos on hematology for nearly around 15 to 16 hours and including youtube that comes around 20 hours so please watch these videos so that you will have a very good knowledge over the hematology medicine because in the hematology medicine the very important aspect is the treatment majority of your hematology you will read that in your pathology and as well as physiology but what makes medicine different from pathology and as well as physiology is the treatment aspect so this particular treatment aspect has been dealt in detail and completely the new developments in the treatment that is new drugs have been taught in detail regarding each and every disorder of hematology so all those particular topics you can watch in an academy learning app in the need pg category under my profile dr g rajesh right so let me take up the first question of the today's session a patient being investigated for anemia has a dry marrow tap peripheral smear reveals tear drop cells what is the likely diagnosis in this individual leukemia lymphoma myelofibrosis polycythemia rubra vera yes so can anyone answer this question So what are the positive points here? Anemia is there and there is also a dry marrow tap. Peripheral smear shows the presence of the tear drop cells. What is the likely diagnosis? Okay, so the likely diagnosis in this particular patient, it is the myelofibrosis. Now, very good uh, Sindhu Vijay, the answer is myelofibrosis. Right, very good Manoj Chaudhary. Okay, you take in other clinical scenarios. In polycythemia rubra vera, what will happen? There will be increase in your RBC count. And in leukemia and as well as in patients with lymphoma, there you will not have dry tap. Right, you will not have dry tap. So from this question, what I want to tell you is, in patients with myelofibrosis, what will happen is the bone marrow is completely replaced by the fibrous tissue. Right, it is completely replaced by the fibrous tissue. So, because there is fibrous tissue within the bone marrow, that is giving you a dry marrow tap whenever you are doing a bone marrow aspiration. Right, next. Can anyone tell me what is the name of the needle what we use for bone marrow aspiration? Or what is the name of that biopsy? Yes, what is the name of the needle and what is that biopsy called? Yes. Right, so very good Pragya. So that is your trephine biopsy. And what is the name of the needle? 
What is the name of the needle? The name of the needle is Jamshadi needle. So with the help of this Jamshadi needle, we do the bone marrow biopsy, right? And that is your trephine biopsy. Now, now what exactly, right? So in this particular slide, I wanted to tell you what exactly is the pathogenesis in case of myelofibrosis. See, in myelofibrosis, in early stages, you will have hyperplasia of all the three cell lines. Means what? There is hyperplasia of your RBC, there will be hyperplasia of your WBC, and there will be also hyperplasia of the platelets. So there is hyperplasia of all the three cellular elements in the early stages of myelofibrosis. But later on, what will happen? Later on, what will happen is all these particular three cellular elements, they are replaced by the fibrous tissue. Right? They are replaced by the fibrous tissue. Now, now the question is why there will be replacement of the fibrous tissue within the bone marrow in myelofibrosis? The reason is because of the megakaryocytes. So what are your megakaryocytes? These are your premature platelets. Right? These are your premature platelets. So now what do you understand by these premature platelets? It means that these are the cells which are present within the bone marrow. And in myelofibrosis, you will have abnormal megakaryocytes. Now, what does this abnormal megakaryocytes do? This particular abnormal megakaryocytes, they will synthesize platelet-derived growth factor and as well as TGF beta. So, these are the two substances which are being synthesized by the abnormal megakaryocytes. And these platelet-derived growth factor and transforming growth factor beta, they are the one which will cause the replacement by the fibrous tissue within the bone marrow. Okay, so once the entire bone marrow is replaced by the fibrous tissue, that will make the individual to land up in cytopenia in the sense there is anemia, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. So the point that you should understand is in early stages there is hyperplasia of all three cellular elements. but as the time progresses, these abnormal megakaryocytes, they will dump the PDF and PDGF and transforming growth factor beta and they will replace the normal cellular elements or hyperplastic cellular elements by the fibrous tissue. Now, so the point is the bone marrow is not there now. So now where do you think the anthropoiesis will occur? The anthropoiesis will occur in the extramedullary region. So where is that extramedullary region that is spleen, liver and as well as the lymph nodes. So in the spleen, liver, lymph nodes, there will be extramedullary anthropoiesis. Why? That is as a part of the common mechanism. So thereby what will happen to the size of these particular organs? Thereby the size of the spleen will increase, splenomegaly. Size of the liver will increase hepatomegaly and there will be also presence of the teardrop cells. I'll explain you in detail about these teardrop cells in my further questions. But for now, remember that in patients with myelofibrosis, you will have the presence of the teardrop cells. Okay. So that completes the basic pathogenesis of what exactly will happen in patients with the myelofibrosis. Right. Now, we will move on to the next question. Yes, a patient with myeloproliferative syndrome presents with decreased white cell and decreased platelets. What is the mostly like most likely diagnosis in this individual? Chronic myeloid leukemia, chronic myelofibrosis, polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytosis. So, let me see who will answer this question first.
All right, very good, Sindhu Vijay. So again, the same answer that is chronic myelofibrosis. So what I want to tell you here is your myelofibrosis. It is a myeloproliferative syndrome. And this is what I wanted to mention from this particular question about the myelofibrosis. Now, sir, there is a dry bone marrow, right? Why are you calling it as a myeloproliferative syndrome? Why? Because in patients with the myelofibrosis in early stages, right? In early stages, there is hyperplasia of all the three cell lines within the bone marrow. Right? There is hyperplasia of all the three cell lines within the bone marrow in early stages. But later, that hyperplastic cell lineage is replaced by the fibrous tissue resulting in pain, resulting in what is called myelofibrosis. All right? So because there is early stage hyperplasia, this is called as the myeloproliferative syndrome. Right? Now, we will move on to the next question. Yes. A patient has the following findings splenomegaly, low RBC count, normal WBC count, and normal platelet count. But the peripheral blood smear shows the tear drop cells, and repeated bone marrow aspiration is unsuccessful. What is the probable diagnosis in this individual? low RBC count, normal WBC, normal platelet count and splenomegaly is there. Yes, so anyone? Right. So, very good Ugandar Babi. So, the answer is the myelofibrosis. It is not your thalassemia. Right? It is not your thalassemia. Why it is not thalassemia is... No, no. It is not thalassemia. Right? The answer is the myelofibrosis. Now, why it is not thalassemia? Let me explain you. In patients with thalassemia, bone marrow will not be dry. So what is given here? Repeated bone marrow aspiration is unsuccessful. That is the point which is against your thalassemia, against your chronic myeloid leukemia, against your iron deficiency anemia as well. So now the question that pops up in your mind is, sir in the previous questions you have said that RBC will be reduced, WBC will be reduced. And even platelets also will be reduced. That is what you have said in the previous question. Right? Initially there will be hyperplasia and followed by that there will be decrease in all the cell lines. But in this question it says there is normal WBC count and the normal platelet count. So why does the answer still be myelofibrosis? Now let me tell you why the answer is still myelofibrosis in this particular question. Whenever the cell lines are affected, right? Whenever the cell lines are affected, I said you all the three cell lines are affected. RBC is affected in myelofibrosis, WBC is also affected in myelofibrosis, and platelets are also affected in the myelofibrosis. But in the sequence, if you see the cell lines which are affected early, the cell lines which are affected in early stages of myelofibrosis will be the RBC. RBC are the one which gets reduced first. Then followed by that, these cells, they will get reduced. Right? Then followed by that, the WBC and as well as the platelets, they get reduced. Okay? Now, I have very clearly mentioned about the presence of the teardrop cells. Now, what do you understand by this word, the teardrop cells? What, if there is presence of teardrop cells, what is it significant? The significance of the teardrop cells is that it indicates 
the extra medullary hematopoiesis right it indicates extra medullary hematopoiesis that is what is your the presence of the tear drop cells will indicate right so i hope everyone has understood this question so please just give me a thumbs up or yes saying that whether you have understood or not all right very good pragya and what about others yes anindita any question you have all right very good now we will move on to the next question now before going into the next question let me just tell you the diagnostic criteria of primary myelofibrosis so now what is your myelofibrosis the bone marrow is replaced by the fibrous tissue that is what is your myelofibrosis now according to the world health organization there are three major criteria and four minor criteria right there are three major criteria and four minor criteria but how many are required for your diagnosis for the diagnosis you require three major plus two minor criteria right we require three major plus two minor criteria for the diagnosis now the question is what are those major criteria the major criteria is that number 1 the bone marrow once you have done that should be showing the presence of the megakaryocyte proliferation not only megakaryocyte proliferation there should be also collagen fibrosis now i said you that there are three cell lines which are affected in myelofibrosis that is rbc reduced wbc reduced platelets they also get reduced so if the question is asked what is the cell line which gets affected first is your rbc and if the question is asked what is the cell line which gets affected last that is your platelets right that is your platelets okay so megakaryocyte it might be still in a state of proliferation what are megakaryocytes that are your platelets and along with that there should be presence of the collagen fibrosis and it the diagnostic criteria should not meet the criteria of chronic myeloid leukemia should not meet the criteria of polycythemia vera should not meet the criteria of myelodysplastic syndrome that is the second criteria and the third criteria is demonstration of jack2 mutations right demonstration of jack2 mutations so these three are your uh, major criteria megakaryocyte proliferation along with fibrous tissue within the bone marrow not meeting who criteria for chronic myeloid leukemia polycythemia vera myelodysplastic syndrome demonstration of jack2 v617f mutation right so these are the three major criteria now you take the minor criteria minor criteria is there should be presence of leukoerythroblastosis i said you in early stages of myelofibrosis there, there is hyperplasia of all the three cell lines so leukoerythroblastosis that means increase in your leukocytes and increase in your erythrocytes but these are only in early stages that is the reason why it has been put under your minor criteria next increase in the ldh what will happen once the bone marrow by the fibrous tissue when the fibrous tissue is depleting the entire rbc once the rbc undergo lysis or whenever there is increase in cell turnover the lactate dehydrogenase levels they get elevated and there will be anemia and there should be palpable splenomegaly now why palpable splenomegaly as a part of the compensatory mechanism to anemia there will be extra medullary erythropoiesis and that is the reason why they can have palpable splenomegaly so these are the who diagnostic criteria of the primary myelofibrosis 
So how many diagnostic criteria should be there? Three major plus two minor should definitely be there. Right? Should definitely be there. Okay. Right. Now we will move on to the next question. Yeah, very interesting question. In which of the following age group myelodysplastic syndromes are most common? 2 to 10 years, 15 to 20 years, 25 to 40 years, more than 50 years. Very good, uh, Pragya Subedi. The answer is more than 50 years. So, more than 50 years, the myelodysplastic syndromes are very common. Right? It is not seen in the children. It is not seen even in the age group of 25 to 40. It is commonly seen in the age group more than 50 years. So, more than 50 years is the correct answer for this particular question on the myelodysplastic syndrome. Now, myelodysplastic syndrome is seen in elderly individuals. Like why? Because in myelodysplastic syndrome in early stages, like there will be bone marrow hyperplasia. Then when there is bone marrow hyperplasia, the individual will not have a florid manifestations. But once this bone marrow hyperplasia is replaced by the fibrous tissue, once the individual is having pancytopenia, that will take almost 50 years. So, the age group at which you have the MDS presentation is more than 50 years, right? Next, you see the next question. Yeah, now myelodysplastic syndrome, why does it occur? Why does it occur is because of the cytogenetic abnormality. Now, my question is, which is the most common cytogenetic abnormality in adult myelodysplastic syndrome trisomy 8 20q 5q monosomy 7 which is the most common cytogenetic abnormality in mds so without any chromosomal abnormality you will not have this mds there should be an underlying cytogenetic abnormality. So, what do you think is the most common cytogenetic abnormality? Right. So, it is not your C. Majority of you are answering 5Q. The answer is monosomy 7. So, monosomy 7 is the most common cytogenetic abnormality in adult myelodysplastic syndrome. So, please mark this question as a very important question. Right? So, this definitely can appear in your upcoming exams. Right? You see, these many cytogenetic abnormalities we have for the development of the myelodysplastic syndrome. Out of which, you take this monosomy 7. Monosomy 7 it constitutes almost 25% cases, right? It constitutes almost 25% cases compared to any other cytogenetic abnormality. So, the most common cytogenetic abnormality in adult myelodysplastic syndrome is monosomy 7, right? Now, you take the next question, last question for this particular session, yeah. Ringed sideroblasts are seen in iron deficiency anemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, thalassemia, anemia of chronic disease. So, what are all the conditions where you will have ringed sideroblasts? Like, first of all, I wanted to know from you, what do you mean by a ringed sideroblast? What does that mean? Yes, can anyone answer? What do you mean by this word? A ringed sideroblast. Yes, can anyone answer what do you understand by this word ringed sideroblast?
right so let me tell you what do you understand by this word ringed sideroblast the ringed sideroblast it is nothing but the presence of no one is answering okay so the sid ringed sideroblast these are the nucleated rbcs right these are nucleated rbc precursors like what does it have so this is the rbc so normally rbc you don't have the nucleus a mature rbc does not have the nucleus right but you see here so this is the a mature rbc and you have the nucleus surrounding the nucleus you have the presence of the iron which is being deposited right you have the presence of iron which is being deposited surrounding the nucleus okay so this is what is called as a ringed sideroblast a nucleated rbc with stainable iron particles around the nucleus is what is called as a ringed sideroblast now the question is where do you have this ringed sideroblast these particular ringed sideroblasts are present in patients with sideroblastic anemia and they are also present in patients with myelodysplastic syndrome right they are also present in patients with myelodysplastic syndrome so these are the two conditions where you will have the presence of the ringed sideroblast so the answer to this particular question is myelodysplastic syndrome right so these are some of the questions related to your myelodysplastic syndrome right so i will wind up this particular session right away and again at 10:30 so 10:30 pm exactly after half an hour you have one more session on the questions on hematology right you will have one more session on the questions on the hematology at 10:30 pm same on the youtube live so i will discuss some more a uh, clinically oriented questions related to your hematology yes manoj chaudhary you want the previous question yeah this is the previous question right so i'll just wind up this particular session here we'll, i will see you back again at 10:30 exactly after half an hour with some more questions related to your hematology thank you very much